Hey everyone. Today we're gonna to repair this DeWalt 20 volt 6 amp hour XR battery. When we reach the end of the video, we'll find out if it was worth the time and effort to do so. Let's check replacement costs. And prices are all over the place. We could see Walmart selling a two pack of five amp hour batteries for $100. Home Depot selling one five amp hour battery for $117 and a matching 6 amp hour battery for 129. Meanwhile, Amazon selling a 2 pack of 5 amp hour batteries for 114, sitting right in the middle of everything. With these prices, is it worth repairing the battery? Let's find out. A word of warning, these videos deal with lithium ion batteries as well as welding. If you're not experienced or feel comfortable doing this kind of work, enjoy the video and go out and buy a new battery. Looking at the bottom of the case, we could see that it is secured in by four Torx screws. The bit is a hollow T10 type. So I connect it to a bit driver and I'll remove those four screws now from the bottom of the case. I'll put these off to the side in a safe place. The two halves may be stuck together and not come apart easily, so I take the flat end of a screwdriver, putting it at the edge of the case. I wrap it with another plastic screwdriver just to loosen that seal. Come around the other way and do the same thing. Very gently, not as to break the plastic. We can see that it's detached, so I can lift off the top cover now. There's a spring under there. I want to make sure that doesn't fall out. I'll put that off to the side as well. We won't be needing anything from the top cover, so I'll also place this off to the side. Here up front is a small circuit board for the power indicator meter. I lift that circuit board up and out of the way. And all these components are really press fit to the bottom of the case, so I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver to gently pry on this side, bringing it up a little. Then I'll flip it around the other direction, and on this side you have to pry in the corners because there's no room in the middle. So I bring up this corner a little, and then this corner a little. And followed by the other one. And now I want to go back around to the other side again because I want to raise this up evenly. So I'll bring it up a little here. Repeating the process over and over until it comes out the bottom of the case. The case bottom won't be needed, so we'll put this off to the side. Taking a look at our battery pack, we'll inspect for damage or smoke or burning. I don't see any. What I do see is there are some robust pieces here welded to connect batteries together. Very thick. I did measure this later and found that it was actually half a mil, so indeed very thick. So at this point we'll break out the multimeter, setting it to DC volts. We'll take a measurement. I'll put it into position and I'm just going to measure this back section right quick, going across these two pads. And I got nothing. It's like zero. Check again. Check against this one, still nothing. Up here, nothing. Yeah, at this point, things are not looking good for this battery pack. At this point, I'm just gonna measure across the positive and negative terminals. Yeah, I got nothing. Battery's completely dead. I'll check my meter against a double A, just to be absolutely sure. And it's working properly. Furthermore, we could see, because of the way it's welded in these groups of 4, 4, and 2, it's going to be impossible to identify if there's one or more bad batteries unless one side is completely disconnected. And this will begin by removing all the connections on one side. What I'm going to do is bend these tabs so I can get at the welds more effectively. This would also assume that I'm trying to reuse these metal pieces, which may not happen given the thickness. But if I was, I could take a razor blade like a box cutter and get in on a weld and hit it with a hammer. Though this box cutter has seen better days and it's not long for this world. Yep, there we go. This would have been better hitting it with a very small sharp chisel, but for the camera it's easier to see using the box cutter. And I don't plan on reusing these metal pieces, so I'm just demonstrating how to remove them. Again, I could have worked slower and removed these with less damage, but my goal right now is just to get the tabs off so I can measure the individual batteries to see if it's worth fixing. And there's our first one removed. Again, with a sharp chisel and a hammer, this could have come off cleaner, but I wasn't really concerned. The second one came off a lot easier, ensuring that I was only trying to break one weld at a time and nothing was damaged on it. 
The third one then came off quickly as it's only connected to two batteries. We've now separated an entire side. While I can now test them individually, I'd like to remove this one tab so I can push out one of the batteries to grab the model number. So I'll do that now. Carefully bending the tab away with my thumb, I'll then press the battery through out of the casing to release it from the case so we can have a look at it. And here's our battery model number. I'll bring it over to the computer and find out what we got. But while we're here, we'll do an individual test on this battery and it is dead. As compared to a battery I pulled from another battery pack showing 4 volts, which is good. The original cells purported to have around 3000 milliamp hours with a maximum draw 30 amps. I see one from Samsung here, 3000 milliamp hours, and this will cost 650 a piece. Since all the batteries in the pack are dead, we're looking at at least $65 plus tax. On top of that, you got shipping. I would have written off this pack as too expensive to repair, having to replace every cell. But for the purpose of the video, I did buy these 4,500 milliamp hour batteries from a different brand, and this cost me less. And this was only due to a special sale. Delivered, these batteries came out to about $59, so almost the cost of a battery pack. While greater capacity, you have to measure it against the two battery pack offering for $99. Is it worth it? But for the purpose of this video, I did order them and proceeded onward to repair this entire pack. And right here the blade slipped and I hit my finger, so be careful. At this point the two halves of the battery pack are now detached. Removing the last piece I bring this portion of the project to an end and I'll go get a band-aid. I'll have to wait for the new batteries to arrive before we continue. A few days later the new batteries are here and what I'm going to do is just push them out one by one so I don't mix up the polarity. Here's one of the old ones, and they are tightly fit in there, so it's not easy to slide out. And with that, I'll just grab one of the new ones and push it in in the same direction. And pushing them in is more difficult than pushing them out, as the outer coating does get caught or hung up on the plastic sharp edges inside. So it takes a little bit of effort to get that in there. There's the first one done. So I'll repeat this process with all the batteries on this side. The center one proved difficult to remove, so I used the nylon side of a hammer to gently tap it out far enough that I could reach it and pull the battery out. This one I wasn't paying attention and put it in in the wrong direction, so off camera I had to fix it. And finally the last one was swapped out. This half is now complete, the other half is done in the exact same manner. Pieces on these halves are keyed as to only fit in one direction. So they can't be pressed together in the wrong way. There's only three raised bumps that connect to one side. So matching them up, I'll just place them together and it should lock in. Not securely, but we can see that it holds in place. They're more like alignment pins. Now this is the welder that I use. It's definitely not equipped for a half mil thickness, but we're going to try it out anyway. I'll post a link for it down below. The one I have tops out at 0.3 mil, so it's not going to cut it. If I wanted to, I could spend some money and get something like this that'll definitely do 0.5. The price goes up from there. I'll use masking tape to temporarily secure both sides together. I've got them together already, I just want to wrap that tape around to make sure that it doesn't separate and they're locked in those keys. Everything has to line up before you start the welding. After which I'll place masking tape over the side I'm currently not working on just to isolate the ends of those batteries and avoid a short. I'll bend all these leads out of the way temporarily and have it faced up on the bench. I know this won't work with this welder, but I'm going to crank it up to full power anyway because we're not going to get anything without full power in this demonstration. I've aligned the pad and I got my pin set up. I have a foot switch and you heard that click from the weld. Tried a couple more times. Here's another one. And then I'm going to hit it a whole bunch of more times just for this demonstration because I don't think it's really hitting the surface or going any deeper than that. Yeah, and it's no surprise. It came right off. The battery didn't even notice a welder was here. So we're going to have to take an entirely different approach to this repair. 
Using a soldering gun, I'll be disconnecting all of the old pieces that connect to the wires that come from the charging circuit. And you can see why I'm using a soldering gun, because these cable connectors here, they're going to take some heat. I'll jump right in and do the other side too, since all these pieces are going away. As a replacement, I'll be using 0.3 mil tin strip. This one was provided with the welder that I purchased, so we might as well use it. This is well within the parameters of this welder. There should be no problems at all. Using the old pieces below as a guide so I know where to weld, I line up the new strip so I know the distance in which to cut it, center to center. It's a bit fiddly at first because I only have two hands to work with, making sure I've dialed back my power because I don't know how much I'm going to need and less is more until you determine that. That looked like a nice weld. Let's continue. Put one on this side now. Stop now. We'll give it a test. This is just with the one weld that I did. And it's holding on real nice. So we're going to add a couple more. Just for good measure. This gives me six on each battery terminal. It's a nice solid connection. I'll cut it off here and proceed on to the next connection. Aligning the tin strip to the center of the battery. I hold it in position with my finger. Then I use the probe to hold it in position. And then with the other probe, I make the first weld. After that first weld, it's a lot easier because nothing's going to move around. So I'm going to make the other welds on this terminal. Give it a quick test and I can see it's securely welded onto the battery. So we'll continue. Line straight, I make that first weld, followed by the next two. This first square is now complete. Everything looks good. We'll be doing this square next and then this. This strip with the two connections will need a lead that goes up to the black wire, so I leave some slack at the end. Tacking these down on these two batteries, this portion of the welding is completed. I should always be mindful of the battery voltage. If it gets too low, I have to wait for it to charge back up. Now it's time for the connections to the charge controllers over here. I'll cut a length of tin, but I wanted half the thickness of what it is, so I'm going to cut it right down the middle first. Once I make this slice long enough, I'll just cut both pieces off. This will replace the tab from the old piece placed right in the middle of the square, just like that with enough slack to come up and reach our connection. I'll tack it down. The camera died right here, but I set it to 20% when I made this connection, and it looks really good. And we can see I made the second connection off camera in the same fashion. Now I'll negotiate that tin strip up to the wire so I can make the best possible connection with the solder. To that end, I decided to bend the wire so the tin strip can fold around it. So I do that with two pliers. Flux is then applied to the connections, allowing the solder to flow easier. The end is then clipped off. And this connection is looking good. Time to move on to the other one. Same procedure, bend the wire to fit appropriately so that it can be wrapped around. Apply flux to the connections. And then solder it in place. Finish it off by clipping off the excess here, and then I have one more piece of wire here hanging off the end I want to clip off. And that piece is done. The metal tab that I left is folded over at 90 degrees to meet the wire, at which point it'll be wrapped around to secure the wire. Flux is applied to the connection, at which point it's soldered together. Checking over my work, everything looks good, everything is secure. At this point, I'll remove the tape from the second side and start placing it on the first side that I've already worked on. And now I'm going to repeat that entire process all over again. Since it's entirely the same, I'm just going to zip through this portion of it. At 0.3 mil, this welder did all right. So now it's time to place the bottom cover on the table. 
we'll take the battery pack aligning this board right here to the opening on the cover and just press it into position slowly till it bottoms out. The circuit board over here is then pressed back into the slot, it fits in the groove, and these two wires have little notches that they fit in. So I'm going to push them in now. We're all set. Before going any further, let's do a test and see what the voltage is. We're seeing 17 and a half volts. Very good. So let's close it up. First, the spring will be placed back in position right here. Then after checking everything's in position, the cover will be aligned and snapped down shut. The four screws will then be reinserted and tightened down first to just remove all the slack. And once all the slack is gone, they'll each be progressively snugged down. Everything is now fully assembled. Looks like everything fits right. Things are looking good. And we do see one bar in the battery because it comes with a slight charge. We're going to have to charge it though. Placing it in the charger, we see the red flashing light, which is a good indication that everything's working fine. A few hours later, it looks like it should be finishing up in just a bit. And now the charger says it's done. So we'll take it off of the charger, have a look at the battery, hit that button again, fully charged. Time to test the battery out. Let's do it. I'll try it on video with this impact tool. Tapping the trigger makes the light turn on. Let's give it a go. Everything seems to be working fine. I'll know the extent of the success of this project over time, but right now everything seems to be working good. Mission accomplished. But was it worth fixing in the end? Given the bigger batteries I put in, I ended up with about a nine amp hour battery and only because those were on sale. And I paid about $60 in parts. The Walmart price averages $50 a piece for a five amp hour battery and Amazon about 57. Now you factor in about an hour and a half of work. So unless it's a battery you can't get anymore anywhere, in this case, it wasn't worth the repair and it would have been cheaper just to get a new one. Unless you could get bigger batteries on sale like I did. So that concludes this video on the repair. And the question, is it worth repairing this DeWalt 20 volt, six amp hour battery? One day, maybe it will be when you can't get them anymore and you don't want to buy all new tools that went with this style battery. But until then, the answer is no. Do me a favor, hit the like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit the subscribe button to be informed of more videos like this when they come out. If another video comes out in the series, a link will be posted in the top right corner. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?